I am going on tour. The Four Seasons tour is coming up this uh, late July into early August. And I thought it would just be fun, since I was doing the vlogs for the Four Seasons as I created them, to talk a little bit like about the tale of this project and including this tour. So basically what happened was um, my friend Olive Klug and I, uh, who is also a great musician whose music you should check out, um, Olive and I were going to do a co-headline tour uh, in early 2023. And then we... Olive ended up getting this opening position on another sh uh, thing and was only able to do three shows instead of like the 10 we had planned. And I had never uh, really played out my music since um, sort of gaining an audience through TikTok, through Instagram, through the internet during the, during the lockdown. And so this was sort of going to be my first live shows that weren't opening for a really big artist because I did get to open for Jason Mraz in 2021 which was amazing but that was Jason's audience listening to me it wasn't my audience coming to find me so I was pretty nervous if I would even have anybody show up or buy a ticket you know I, I think in my head I thought it's one thing for folks to be a fan on the internet double click your video and then move on and it's totally different for them to you know hire a babysitter um make plans that night, find parking, pay for parking, come into the venue, pay for a ticket. So anyway, these three shows came up. They were uh, in Salt Lake City uh, and at Kilby Court. And then another one was in Denver. And then the third was in Phoenix. And the long and short of it was they went really, really incredibly. And as I was standing up there during the very first show in Salt Lake City, I I get up there and I realize there's like a hundred people here and they all know the words to my songs, including songs that had only come out a few days earlier on Winter, which I had I had just released. And something sort of clicked in my mind, firstly, to be like, oh, people really do want to come to these shows. I can't believe it. But then also, I have worked, you know, really, really hard for the last year and a half on the Four Seasons records. And I... I had been thinking to myself for a long time, it's like, one of the things that's frustrating about releasing music online or on the internet is that there's no, um, there's no point when I get to see how it reaches people, you know? I might get a message or a like or something, but I don't get to have that experience of, you know, being there with them. And suddenly I realized during that show as I was playing these songs, people were singing along, people were laughing, people were tearing up, people were s singing, it, that this is the reward of all the work, you know? Um, I worked really hard on these four records and I want, just for myself, a chance to meet the people who've been listening to that music. And so that's what this tour is for me. It is the, the reward for the work of doing the records. Now, of course, ironically, to get to that reward takes a lot more work. So if you're interested to know how a completely independent artist books a tour, that's what this next like two minutes is about. Basically, you have options when you're independent and you want to book a tour. You can try to like hire a booker or promoter to um, to send emails and schedule things on your behalf, or you can try to do it yourself. And I wanted to try and do it myself, so I did. And it was very hard. I can see why people um, have booking agents and managers and things like this. Basically, how it works, if you ever want to uh, go on tour, is uh, you you just have to, firstly, you have to figure out what cities to play in. And then uh, you have to figure out how to contact the, the venues in those cities and convince them to let you play there. So basically, for the first part, the deciding where to play, I had this idea that um, since I, I couldn't really afford to guess, like I couldn't really afford to be like, well, there's a lot of people in New York City, maybe I should go there. So instead, for four months, I had RSVPs available on my, like, um, tour page. So anybody that came across my music, you know, from a viral video or something could uh, RSVP and be like, I would come see you in this city. And uh, so after about four months, I had about 10 cities with at least 40 to 50 RSVPs in those cities. And I thought 10 cities is about the right amount for a tour for me at this time in my life. So that's what I did is I 
um, I wrote down those 10 cities that had those 50 RSVPs and that's what I based it on. So then I um, had to start finding the venues. So basically you just send like a, a billion emails. So you Google best indie folk music venues, Washington, D.C., and, you know, somebody somewhere has written an article about the 10 best venues. And so you, you email those 10 venues, usually just using, like, contact info on their website. And then uh, you you have to find more because the first 10 don't respond. So you find another 10 venues and you email them. And you do that with all 10 cities. So I probably sent out maybe 200 um, email requests. Um, and in all of those emails, which were basically exactly the same, I said, Hi, I'm Philip. I have this amount of followers. I have this amount of listeners on Spotify. I have 50 RSVPs for my show um, in the city. That's a commitment from that person to buying a ticket. And that was enough to convince at least one venue, sometimes two, but usually just one in each city, to take a shot on booking me um, at their venue. Booking a, a tour is also crazy because you don't want to be flying home between each city, so you want to, like, stack them all. So the way they do it is you, you place, like, holds on each city. So, you know, if I want to play in Washington Wednesday, Philly Thursday, um, Boston Friday, you know, um, then I have to be able to kind of line them all up and then book them all at once. So that's what, And that's what every tour is trying to do at the same time. So it can get pretty chaotic. But basically, yeah, eventually I was able to get all the cities I wanted, with the exception of Chicago. I was never able to find a Chicago venue, even though Chicago was one of the cities I had the most RSVPs in. So if anyone watching this lives in Chicago and wants to host a house show for 100 people uh, in their apartment or in their home or backyard on uh, August 9th, 2023, feel free to uh, message me on Instagram or text me uh, at my like fan text number. Um, so uh, yeah, so I, I did all that. Um, this whole process has uh, very much been a practice in resiliency for sure, because, um, you have to be resilient because there's a lot of no's. Like I said, I, I think I got about 19 no's for every one yes, but the good news is I only needed one yes to play in a city. Um, so now that part is done. I got to announce the show and, um, there comes the second part, which is like um, selling tickets, uh, which is its own um, fascinating thing. You know, um, the, the the interesting thing is I have now almost 300,000 people following me on the Internet. And I truly believe I, I only need to sell about 100 tickets in each city for to me to have like a successful tour. But that's actually a lot of tickets, 100 in each major metropolitan in, you know, London and Philadelphia and Boston, each of these places. When you think about it, like if nobody, if no one knew my music at all, that'd be really, really hard. So the funny thing now is that it feels like my biggest job is actually just to tell the 300,000 people who already like my music, somehow let them know that I'm going to be in their city, which is surprisingly difficult because I'm working through like tech platforms like TikTok where they want me to spend quite literally fifty thousand, seventy thousand dollars just to be able to reach my own audience. Uh, or I have to like go viral. And of course if every musician knew how to go viral, uh, then there wouldn't be you know, there'd be no need for the, <laughs> the music industry. Um so um these are the things I'm thinking about. Uh then the the other half of it, after all the business stuff and the stuff that I'm excited to get to think about more, because tickets are selling well. Um, in a few cities, I've already sold over half of the available tickets. Um, a few cities are definitely going to sell out, so I'm excited about that. Um, but there's um, a fun part as well, which is um, I get to do things like find local openers. So just two years ago, I was opening for Jason Mraz on his tour, is an incredibly uh, awesome experience. Um, obviously, I don't have that kind of pull, not even close. Uh, so anyone who opens for me isn't going to have the uh, incredible exposure of being, you know, put in front of a Grammy winner. But if I'm lucky, I'll be able to give a little bit of exposure to a cool local artist that I believe in or do like a co-headline date with another Internet artist who I might really like uh, or who has a following of their own. 
So I'm excited about that, uh, both from getting to like play with my friends and, and give opportunities to friends and also to give opportunities to people who maybe are just earlier in their journey, earlier in their career and want to um, have an opportunity. So I'm, I'm excited to be able to, to share those opportunities. Um, and of course, I'm thinking about how to have a really fun, great show, you know, trying to think of uh, songs where we can all sing along, songs where there can be some sort of uh, <coughs> fun dancey part or exciting part like that. I don't know what it is yet, but it excites me to start thinking about it. Um, so if you're watching this, um, these vlogs, no one ever really watches them, but I do them just because I think it's fun to have a little record of what's going on. Um, yeah, I will, I will hope to see you at one of these tour dates. Um, I'm going to link them in the link in the bio. The next time I do this blog, I'm going to talk all about, um, the four seasons on vinyl, which has been the other huge project I've taken on since, uh, winter came out, uh, at the end of, uh, March, February. Gosh, time is flying. Uh, so yeah, between the vinyl and this tour has really been most of my energy for the last four months. So, uh, and of course, writing new songs, but that's a whole other video. So uh, next time on this vlog, we'll be talking about the vinyl. Um, but yeah, hope to see you at the Four Seasons tour. And uh, yeah, see you soon. Bye.